All right, guys, so this is a physique update in March. This is from last Saturday. Um, here, I just have my shirt on. One thing I noticed, guys, is if you look through my physique updates, I started this uh, not too long ago, but I think in the win the fall of 2016. I stay, sh I stay lean. I stay ripped. That, that, should, that should attest to my knowledge and, and my understanding of fat loss and should really pretty much endorse me guys I, 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 that, that that's a strong endorsement you know um, but one thing I notice is um, again I'm dealing with some you know imbalance issues and you know and, and, and they, they, they limit me but what I love is if you look at these results um, I've started to add some more resistance training um, and I've been focusing a little more on my nutrition. Now, in this first video here, guys, this is me. Uh, I just, I felt like my conditioning was really good this morning. And so I wanted to get a, um, you know, some, some video of it. Um, but if you, what's coming after this is after weight training workout. The next, I think it was literally like three days later. It was like um, either on Tuesday or Monday. But here I'm just kind of doing some basic physique poses, um, showing my calves too. So I'm not just upper body lean, you know, and, and I've got, you know, and I like this twist and shot here. It's a good way to finish it. So here's, here's the next one, guys, and this is pretty cool. I mean, look at the difference in terms of the pump and how I look fuller and just, I mean, I look thicker up through the shoulders, through the arms, the chest, and I'm still maintaining that nice tight waist. Um, this is probably the biggest, I think, that I've looked in my recent physique updates and it's simply because I've added some, I've added a little bit of plant protein to my diet. Um, and we're talking literally just a teaspoon. Because again, I'm not a big fan of processed proteins, but you can't help that there are some signs to support the, the anabolic response that they um, you know, bring. And also just in general, but plant proteins tend to be better anyway in general. So you could check out the cards. But anyhow, thanks, thanks for watching. Tune in next time. Okay guys, I actually want to finish that train of thought there that I was going to go into. I ran out of footage because that was it, but uh, you know, I'm going to just go ahead and have a few of these pictures here to uh, kind of narrate through. Uh, but essentially, what I was talking about was that plant proteins tend to be better in a sense that they are fantastic body composition modulators. Uh, now, if we're just focusing on adding mass, of course animal proteins, in my opinion, are going to be better because they're more anabolic overall. Just they have a higher amino acid score and, you know, that's based on, you know, science of amino acids, particularly, um, you know, the, the levels of the branch chain amino acids and particularly leucine, which is the most anabolic and, and, and a chief stimulator of protein synthesis. Um, but that being said, there are some caveats with that. In the research that we look at, guys, shows that you know being overly anabolic sometimes can be not the best thing in terms of a systemic response you're not just increasing muscle tissue you know um, you could be increasing um, you know abnormal tissue as well as fat tissue you know this anabolic versus catabolic systemic res signaling that I talked about in my previous videos and on cracking the obesity code and just in general uh, so why do I like plant proteins well again I talk about them being dilute in other words, their amino acid scores perhaps are not as high, but perhaps that's a good thing, okay? Um, so in other words, what we thought wasn't the best thing about plant proteins not being as bioavailable in certain nutrients could actually be a good thing because they because it inherently creates moderation of nutrients. In other words, it prevents us from overabsorbing too much of one nutrient, okay? Whereas with an animal protein, you're pretty much getting a high dose of heme iron, which as studies have shown is not as good as we once thought, even though it's a more bioavailable form of iron, they're finding that it's also got some associated risk with it. If you look at the bottom of this video, you'll see those studies. So the plant proteins tend to be dilute, so they kind of give you a little bit of an anabolic response, but not too much. And in essence, they also tend to be low glycemic or low insulinogenic. Particularly when we talk about animal proteins stimulating and high insulin response, Dr. Greger talks about pretty much like animal proteins doing that, and he actually has uh, he makes reference to red meat, which is interesting. Uh, but from my understanding, dairy tends to be insulinogenic as well. Particularly, that's the main one that's been found to be insulinogenic. Um, it, it, it creates a high insulin response in the body, even though it's very low in sugar, albeit it does have lactose, which is milk sugar. Uh, but not a lot of that. So anyway, it's insulinogenic. 
So you're going to get a high anabolic response, but you're also going to shut down some fat loss in theory because of the high insulin response from the dairy. Whereas with, now of course there's the fact that dairy is high in calcium, so that could actually kind of, um, you know, reduce the, the, uh, the inhibition of fat loss from the insulin agenic of property. But all, all in all, I think plant proteins are better at, at, at uh, sustaining fat loss while you're building muscle because they have a low insulin index and they have some anabolic um, you know, effects as well. And that's why I like them um, better. Uh, I've said this before and sometimes I, I don't speak as clearly about it, but I feel like that's, that's why I like plant proteins better. Now, if there's evidence that comes out in the future that sheds light on animal protein being an essential um, you know, element in human health, then that would make me rethink my position and, and my views, quite frankly. Okay? I'm, yes, I'm open-minded. Okay? But currently, the consensus data shows that, you know, these, these needs, the you know, anabolic needs, and just in general, can be met through a plant-based diet. Um, it could either be 100% plant-based or highly plant-based. In, in a sense, it's maybe 70, 80, 90% plant-based. Okay? So with that being said, guys, thank you for watching. Again, uh, make sure you like this video and feel free to leave comments and questions below. Subscribe if you haven't already. I've got plenty of videos, guys. You can navigate through my channel. So, and I've got playlists. If you go to my channel page, you'll see I've got some playlists there to kind of help you guys kind of narrow down any particular topics you want to uh, learn about or, 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 or see. So thanks for watching. Tune in next time.